I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the styles of movies I love, the alternative B-rated cult style flicks. You love movies that are so friggin' awful that they're great? Starring people who are now ridiculously famous? Then this is one of your gems. This movie was released in 1970. It was directed by Arthur Allen Schneedelman. Written and produced by Aubrey Weisberg. Made and distributed by Film Partners and RAF Industries, as well as Lionsgate. Ladies and gentlemen, Hercules in New York. The movie opens with an introduction to Mount Olympus. Hercules is asking his father Zeus if he can go to Earth. His father doesn't want him to. He forbids it. But Hercules doesn't care. He's bored on Mount Olympus. He wants to go visit Earth for a while. Hercules is played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. This was his very first movie. And he's embarrassed by it. However, because at the time they said Schwarzenegger is way too long, nobody's going to remember that, nobody's going to be even able to say that, he's casted as Arnold Strong. I'm tired of the same old faces, the same old things. He's also dubbed in this movie. Now that the DVD is out, most of the DVDs have the option of either the dubbed version or the undubbed version. At the time when they released this movie, they believed that his Austrian accent was so thick that most people would not be able to understand him. I have seen both the dubbed and undubbed versions of this movie, and I kind of agree a little bit that he's hard to understand. Not enough to where I would have personally dubbed him, but one, I personally only have the dubbed version, and even if I didn't, I'd still review the dubbed version because it's so much funnier. Even though Zeus has forbidden him to go to Earth, Hercules says he's gonna go anyways. Perhaps this will teach you respect for your elders! This movie's very low budget. After that huge explosion, Hercules falls to Earth and into the middle of the ocean. Hercules gets picked up by a ship and they of course ask him who he is, how he got there, and he tells them straight up who he is and how he got there. But of course they just think he's nutty and must have gotten like some brain damage from the shock of the cold water or something. They don't believe he's really Hercules, which is why they keep asking him who he is. As I've told you, I'm Hercules, the son of Zeus. The voiceover actor for Hercules is not credited in this movie, so we have no idea who actually dubbed him. But let me tell you, as somebody who's seen both versions, dubbed and undubbed, both voices have just as much emotion in them. So now Hercules asks... Where is the ship bound for? New York. Oh, that's why it's called Hercules in New York. Hopefully most of the movie's not in New York and just pretending it's gonna be in New York. Yeah. Although, there was a possibility of that, considering the original title of the movie was supposed to be Hercules Goes Bananas. I like Hercules in New York better. Later, Hercules gets into an altercation with some of the crew. <laughs> Odd music to play during a fight. Apparently the fight is because one of the crew members was telling Hercules to help out and work, and he didn't want to. But one of the higher-ups says maybe he just didn't understand you. I understood him. He's most disagreeable, and he has irritated me. Demigods. When they dock, Hercules goes to leave, but they tell him he needs permission to get off the boat first. He tells him he's Hercules. He doesn't need anybody's permission for anything. So, not wanting to get into another altercation with Hercules, they offer some guy sitting at the docks 20 bucks to go take him down. You know, no matter how many people I had helping me, I don't know if 20 bucks would be tempting enough for me to go challenge that guy to a fight. I mean, that is a really big dude. Even if I didn't know he was Hercules, it's still a big dude. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger in his Mr. Universe era days. While this fight is going on, a little guy played by Arnold Stang, kind of what inspired Arnold Strong, is selling pretzels at the dock. And he takes it upon himself to get Hercules out of there and into a cab. He tells him his name, but says people call him Pretzi. Well, they call me Pretzi because, you see, uh, I sell pretzels on the waterfront there. Good thing you don't sell tampons. They arrive at Central Park, and the cab driver wants his fare of $2. $2 nowadays couldn't get you a foot. I don't have any money. Apparently neither does Pretzi. Selling pretzels isn't that lucrative. Maybe it's time you switch to tampons. 
The cab driver is angry and wants to go fight Hercules. I wouldn't. And that's why. Because again, I would honestly assume that guy could do that anyway. Duh. Was it worth the $2? They go into the park and they see some college athletes training. So Hercules takes it upon himself to go show them how to throw a discus. Of course, Hercules was in the original Olympics. Ha 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 ha. What? You really thought I would do a movie that was dubbed without doing some dubbing myself? You don't know me at all! Now the javelin throw! That's right, I am Hercules. I throw javelins and discus. I also get to the chopper! Observing this is a Professor Camden and his daughter Helen. They take a liking to Hercules, so invite him and Pretzi over for tea that afternoon. And Hercules takes a liking to Helen. It's only that you remind me of someone. Really? Someone you know? A goddess. Smooth. But her boyfriend comes in and he doesn't like the smoothness. <laughs> He'll have to get over it. Whatever am I going to do with the young fool? You're going to make a machine out of him and send him into the past. So naturally, Helen goes on a date with Hercules. And while they're taking a nice little carriage ride, Hercules gets into a fight with a totally real looking grizzly bear that escaped from the zoo and entered the city that day. What does Helen do? Sure. So after news of Hercules' fight with the bear gets out, Pretzi thinks of a way to bank off of this and make some money. Bro wrestling! And this is back when they were still portraying it as being very real. But after his first match, the mob decides that they want his contract. Even though he doesn't have one. Him and Pretzi are just friends. But even still, they want Pretzi to sign over the contract to Hercules. And Pretzi says, no, he is my friend. I'm not doing this. But if you want to get tough, we can oblige you. So Pretzi signs. Back at Olympus, Zeus calls for Nemesis. Take with you my wish that Hercules be punished for setting himself against me. He's still a little miffed, but Mercury and a few of the goddesses beg Zeus, before you send Nemesis after him, let Mercury go talk to Hercules. See if he can reason with him. Do not fail. I'll be gone. So Mercury goes to New York, finds Hercules, and has a chat with him, telling him that Zeus is getting angrier and angrier. But Hercules does not care. He likes New York. He wants to stay for a while. Mercury warns that Zeus may send Nemesis. Zeus wouldn't send her after me. Oh, that is just awkward. Since Mercury cannot convince Hercules to come back, he leaves. He oh. oh, this movie is awful. But it's still not the worst Hercules movie I've ever seen. <sighs> when Pretzi wakes up, he goes to Professor Camden, freaking out about what he just saw. Relax, will you? A cup of black coffee and everything will be just fine. Ew. Cream and sugar, please. Because <sighs> I love myself. Zeus now sends Nemesis down there to get a hold of Hercules and banish him to the underworld for a hundred years as punishment for disobeying him. But as Nemesis is about to leave, Zeus's wife Juno, because they really badly keep mixing up Roman and Greek mythology in this movie, stops her with another idea. He shall become one of those wretched mortals. Hey, we're not that bad. Well, kinda. Yeah. After Nemesis spikes Hercules' strength with the powder that will turn him mortal for a time, she goes to the underworld to talk to Pluto. What a triumph, what a coup, what a feather in my cap to snatch the soul of a demigod. The biggest feather in your cap would have been if they called you Hades. Pluto says, though, he doesn't kill, he only punishes. But Nemesis reminds him, he's a genius. He can, of course, figure out a way to trick Hercules into going into the underworld for a hundred years. So Pluto goes to see Hercules and work his magic. You have plenty of cards, right? I can see that you can get any one of those dames, women, who, uh... 
girls. Genius. Because I imagine that guy would have a lot of problems getting girls considering he's only Mr. Universe. This, of course, does not convince Hercules to leave. It merely annoys him. So he tells Pluto it's time for him to leave. And leave now. I'll see you again sometime. How did they do that? So Pluto's next plan is to go meet with the gangsters that bought out Hercules' contract and make a bet on Hercules. You're laying 20 grand at 5 to 1 on Hercules to lose. So now we go to a demonstration of strength between Hercules and his opponent, Monstro the Magnificent. Hey, let's give my big, big hand, Monstro the Magnificent. Monstro is played by Tony Carroll, whose biggest claim to fame was in the Masters of the Universe movie. He played Beastman. Now it's Hercules' turn. They keep adding weight to the point that the weight is now 1,000 pounds. Even though in reality, the clean and jerk lifting record is only 581 pounds. What's the matter? Being dubbed got you pushing too many pencils. But, 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 but what happened? I don't know. What happened is you were an unknown and the producers thought your accent was too thick, so they dubbed you. Get over it. You'll make better movies. Helen and Professor Camden lure the gangsters who are pissed away. Follow them. Don't lose them. But Hercules will not allow them to put themselves in danger. He goes after them. Hey, come back with my chariot. To do this, he steals the chariot of a street performer who just happened to be getting a hot dog. Plausible. So he rides the chariot until the wheel falls off. Literally. But luckily, through the chariot, they're able to catch up to Professor Camden and his daughter Helen. Plausible. The street performer catches up, and of course he's distraught over his chariot. But look on the bright side. The hot dog vendor was so dedicated that he followed you with your sauerkraut. So it ain't all bad. Up in Olympus, Zeus is really mad about Hercules having his divinity taken away from him, even only for a time. He never authorized that. So he has Nemesis summoned to him, and he wants her to tell him whose idea that was. Speak up, or I'll blast you where you stand. Hey, say what you want, but those rod thingies hurt. Nemesis, of course, tells him that it was his wife Hera. I'm sorry, Juno. How many times have I told you I will not tolerate your everlasting interference? I thought it best. She's not that scared of the rod. As far as what is Zeus going to do about Hercules now? Let him abide by the consequences of his own folly and obstinacy. So now Hercules is alone to deal with the gangsters. And they pounce on him, thrash him, do monstrous and unspeakable things like pull his hair. So Venus and Mercury decide to send Hercules some help. They send Atlas and Samson. <laughs> Okay, it's bad enough how you keep mixing up Greek and Roman mythology, but... Samson's from the Bible. I'm not adding those noises. That's all this movie. Eventually, Hercules beats the gangsters. Biblically. Now we go to Hercules and Pretzi, checking out the Empire State Building. You know, like a couple of buddies, sightseeing. While looking down on New York, Hercules suddenly has a change of heart. Zeus has only to speak now for Hercules to obey. Zeus takes him back, but what about Pretzi? I ain't never gonna forget him. How could you? He sounds like a robot. Then again, so does his real voice. Pretzi turns on the radio. I enjoyed knowing you, my little friend. Even in the undubbed version, this is the same voice on the radio, because Arnold Schwarzenegger never filmed this part. Anytime you wish me to be with you, all you need to do is think of me. Well, imagine if somebody said that to you. If you ever miss me, just think about me. Like, gee, thanks. Thinking about you is why I'm missing you, dummy. Let's go eat an apple. Well, have fun. There you have it! That's the B-movie classic, Hercules in New York. This movie has definitely made money since its release, mostly because the budget was only $300,000. Very low budget. And like I talked about earlier, this was the film debut of Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
which he is very embarrassed by. He does not like to reference this movie ever. He doesn't like to talk about it. In fact, before he does interviews, there is a clause in the contracts that states that if they bring up the movie Hercules in New York without prior permission, he is allowed to end the interview right there and then. He does not like referring to this movie. To that, though, I would say, come on, dude. It was your first movie. You had to take what you can get. That's how a lot of actors start out. Heck, plenty of actors are embarrassed by their very first film roles. Uh-huh. But the very few times that Arnold has talked about this movie in interviews, he's mentioned he very thoroughly regrets it. But come on, dude. Not every movie you make is going to be great. Some are going to be good. Some are going to be horrible. And some of them are going to be good and people just won't accept them for a long time. Last action hero all day, yo! But he and his agent were actually so desperate for him to get a role that his agent told the producers that Arnold had a lot of stage experience. Which wasn't really a lie, per se. It was just that his stage experience was a bodybuilding stage. But hey, think about it this way. This was his start. So this movie led to him getting other movies, which led to him making some of the best movies ever made, like Terminator 2. So we have that to thank for this. This movie, though, like I said, it's made money off of its $300,000 budget, but it doesn't really make a lot of money, so much to the point that when the copyright expired originally, the new copyright was sold on eBay to some random person we don't know. However, if you're the person that did buy this movie on eBay and you're watching this right now, it's a review. It's fair use. However, there's no question about it that this movie is a train wreck. The acting is horrible. The story makes no sense. Whoever did this movie clearly did not do their research about Greek mythology as they kept mixing it up with Roman mythology and again, even threw a little bit of the Bible in there. So it's just very all around horribly done, but it's so fun to watch. It's such a train wreck. I would honestly put this up there with movies like Samurai Cop and Troll 2. Now, I will admit the undubbed version is not quite as fun, but still very fun because it's still a train wreck. No matter how much you dress this up, it's still a freaking train wreck. And I love it. So on that note, if you're one of those people like me who loves to watch just ridiculously bad movies and laugh your butt off at how ridiculously bad it is, then you need to check out Hercules in New York. It's so worth it. So there you have it. That's my movie review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you'll get notifications for when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Hercules in New York. Tell me if you like the dubbed version or the undubbed version better. Love you guys.